Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And welcome as we gather on a cool and crisp fall day. It's lovely to be here in worship and wonderful that so many of us can be here together at St. John's in the building, but also we're grateful for those who are worshiping with us from home or in other places. I'm glad that we can be united through technology so that we can all be a part of this time of worship. Our service this morning is a service of the word and everything um, other than the hymns are printed in your order of service. We are allowed to sing softly while wearing masks, so I encourage you to, uh, if you wish to do that, to, to do that um, when the hymns come up and there are two congregational hymns. We're being very adventurous these days. <laughs> so we begin with these these responsive sentences which are printed in your bulletin. Your love is as high as the heavens, O God. Your faithfulness soars through the skies. Your righteousness reaches the tower of the peaks. Your mercy the depths of the sea. We shelter beneath your wings. We feast on the food you provide. We open our eyes to drink in your goodness, for we are our source of all life. And because of your light, we will see that. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue with the prayer of confession and restoration from the island. Mm -hmm. Not out of dread and fear, but believing God is faithful to forgive. Let us rid ourselves of what we need to carry no longer. We confess to God and in the company of all God's people, that our lives and the life of the world are broken by our sin. We have failed to do all that we could and have walked away from that which we might have done. God, forgive us. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you pardon and forgiveness of all your sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll continue with our opening hymn, Alleluia number one, uh, number 405 in the blue common phrase hymn book. Alleluia number one. <laughs>
invite you to pray with me the call out of the day, which is printed in your bowl. Let us pray. O God, whose image we bear and whose name we carry, yours is the world and all it contains. Recall us to our true allegiance, so that above the powers and rulers of this world, you alone may claim our loyalty and love. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the proclamation of the word. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, Bring up this people. But you have not let me know whom will you send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now, if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways, so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people. He said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, If your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall I, how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight? I and your people, unless you go with us. In this way we shall be distinct, I and your people, from every people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, Show me your glory, I pray. And he said, the Lord said, I will make all the good God goodness pass before you and will proclaim before you the name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And I will show mercy to whom I will show mercy. But, he said, you cannot see my face. No one shall see me and live. And the Lord continued, See, there a place by me where shall stand on the rock. While my glory passes by, I shall put, out, put you in the cliff of the rock. I will cover you with my hand until I have passed. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back. But my face shall not be seen. The word of the Lord. Amen. Psalm 99, printed in your bulletin. The response in bold print. The Lord reigns, but the people tremble. The Lord is enthroned upon the cherubims that the earth shake. The Lord is great in Zion. Let them confess your name, which is great and awesome. You are the Holy One. Almighty Sovereign, the lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice for my restored in Jacob. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God, and shall down and fall down before the footstool of God. The Lord is the Holy One. Moses and Aaron among the priests, and Samuel among those who call upon your name. They call upon you, O Lord, and you answer them. You spoke to them over the pillar of the cloud. They kept your testimonies and decree that you and the decree that you have given them. O Lord our God, you answer them indeed. You are a Proclaim the greatness of the Lord, 
our God, and worship upon the holy hill of God. For the Lord our God is the Holy One. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvus, and Timothy, to the Church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers. Constantly remember before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love, steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you, because our message of the gospel came to you, not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit, and will fill conviction just as you know what kind of persons we prove to be among you for your sake. And you became innovators of us and of the Lord, for in spite of the persecution, you received the word with joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of these regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. When the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said, so they sent their disciples to him, along with the Her Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere, and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show difference to no one. We do not regard people with particularity. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to you, emperor, or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is on this, and whose title? Well, they answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. And when he heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of Christ. Render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. These well-known words from our Gospel reading today will be familiar to all of us. The setting is typical of how Jesus was sometimes cornered by his adversaries, the three schools of Jewish spiritual leadership, the Herodians, the Sadducees, and the Pharisees schools that didn't see eye to eye themselves, and certainly not with a perceived interloper like this itinerant Jesus of Nazareth. In our gospel passage just read, the evangelist Matthew records a series of essentially loaded and unanswerable questions 
leading to debates between Jesus and these local religious leaders. But Jesus has a ready answer to all three attempts to trap him into ambiguity and what would then pass for heresy. First then, and the special focus of our scripture today, the Herodians aimed to politically compromise Jesus into bad-mouthing King Herod, the current local ruler and representative of the Roman Emperor, and thereby the whole apparatus of the state, something that could easily lead to an arrest for sedition. Incidentally, the Herodians were, as the name suggests, supporters of Herod, but surprisingly, most Jews were not. That's because Herod's family came from Idumea, a non-Jewish area, and therefore many Jews did not regard the Herods as legitimate rulers of Israel. Nevertheless, their question was a dangerous one. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? And we are all familiar with our Lord's ready response. Give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and to God the things that are God's. This celebrated sentence is one that we have all heard many times. How pertinent, we, we might wonder, is this 2,000-year-old sentence to our world today? It's first and foremost something that does indeed indicate that every generation and every nation has had to balance this dichotomy, as did our ancestors of old. And unquestionably, we also have certain responsibilities to the political state in which we live. Wherever that might be. And political order in society is certainly necessary. And when it breaks down, chaos and suffering will fall. That doesn't mean the leadership of the state shouldn't be held up for examination. But for human society to function, some form of acceptance of state or political order is pretty well necessary. How difficult this assumption has been over the course of history, and how difficult it continues to be even today. Accepting the political rule of a perceived odious administration in our times is the law of so many peoples. From Russia and Belarus and Turkey and Venezuela, to name but a few. And sadly, depending on your point of view, for the last few years, we could even perhaps include our beloved neighbor to the south, the United States of America. But Jesus clearly recognized that there's a line between politics and personal spiritual well-being and urges us to acknowledge that there will always be a whole world out there that we have to learn to live in and even to accept a world we may not particularly like. And this is the world of Herod, of Caesar, of the likes of Vladimir Putin and Viktor Orban and Nicolas Maduro in the broad sense of the term. It is a secular world for the most part. And in all societies, in varying degrees of intensity, it also has as its hallmarks a competitive, unequal world, fast-paced and periodically unsettled by the unexpected, such as the current pandemic, which affects us all. But surely this famous sentence of rendering unto Caesar that which is his is more than just an acknowledgement of the fact that government, bad or good, is a fact of life. It is that, of course. But perhaps Jesus is also telling his followers to accept life as it is. He never preached political rebellion or sedition, but instead focused on what we can do for ourselves and others 
by seeking and following an honorable life, however we might want to define that. Each of us here forges a life, hopefully but not always to the best of our ability. And each of us here experiences a certain amount of good and bad luck, in uneven doses to be sure. And each of us here must try to work within the system, not breaking the law or social conventions, trying to pass the various tests of life that come our way. But at the same time, as accepting life as it is, Christ urges us in a sense to transcend it, to give unto God the things that are God, and to exhibit these things in our daily lives. And what are these things that are God's? Perhaps we could pause for a moment to reflect on this. All of us will have our own thoughts on the matter, our own list of things that are God's. Perhaps it includes embracing what might be called our inner self, the non-egotistical self that seeks equilibrium and rest and the comfort that only God can give us. Perhaps it includes charity in its broadest sense, and love and gratitude and humility. And certainly, would you not agree, honesty and forgiveness. We are reminded of this in another passage from Matthew chapter 6, where Jesus memorably said, Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through and steal for there where your treasure is there in your heart be also. Here, heaven is not some celestial sphere in outer space, but is where one's heart or attention will be. It is as if to say that what's valuable now is what God cares about. Treating people courteously, expressing gratitude and humility, loyalty to what we know to be worthy and honest, including, hopefully, and where possible, the country in which one lives. But above all, at least for me personally, I think gentleness of heart, however we might want to define that sentiment, somehow sums up in a great sweep the various virtues our Christian faith proclaims. These various features or things that are God's, help us transcend the material, raw edge of Caesar's world. A world of inequalities and often ruthless economic, political, and social competition and plain unfairness. None of us can entirely escape Caesar's world, of course. But the things that make us better persons and in turn the world a better place are immediately and always available to us if only we acknowledge them in our daily living. May we always strive to reach out for these gifts and powers that are within our grasp and thereby learn again how to both cooperate with the world in which we live and to rise above its often undeserved and in sensitive dimensions. Amen. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no 
Our response today is, my part, com compassionate Lord, yours is, your love lives forever. We know that God has done so much for us. Let us bring our concerns to him for the church and for the world. People here feel helpless, frightened, and seek reassurance from, church, <coughs> from churches in all parts of the world. We pray for all the churches, including St. John's, our church, the Episcopal Church, and the parishes of Mahone Bay and New Dublin with Peter Rivière, Nova Scotia. Compassionate Lord, your love lives forever. Thank you, Father, for Sandra, our future bishop. We pray that you are with her and her family as they prepare for the transition that will affect all their lives. We pray for them as they face the many changes that are going to come within the next number of weeks and months. We too will add our prayers for Sandra, Jim, Emma, and Alex, and we will help whenever and wherever the need is. Compassionate Lord, your love lives forever. Thank you, Father, for the love that forgives us again and again, and that you trust us in turn to give help to others even after we have let you down many times. Teach us to care for one another's needs with compassion, sensitivity, and discipline so that all are affirmed and encouraged. Compassionate Lord, your love lives forever. God, you have given us this world to live in. It is a world filled with diversity of plants, animals, minerals, waters, and other things that I haven't thought of. You have order and variety, simplicity and complexity within the habitats and ecosystems. Thank you for this and for giving us the opportunity to use these gifts. May we use them wisely and well for the good of all, even those that are as yet unborn. Compassionate Lord, your love lives forever. Thank you, Father, for all the times that you give us the opportunity to be forgiving. It makes us realize that we must get over our self-righteousness, our self-centeredness, our jealousy, Help us keep learning, learning humility, so that we can become better followers of you. Compassionate Lord, your love lives forever. Father, we pray for your healing and transforming touch. May you extend it to Gloria, Connie, Heidi, Anne, Kathleen, Rob, Don and Betty, Sylvia, Roger, Vange, Tracy, Becca, Kathy, Willie, Anna Lee, Louisa, Bill, Jerry, Bob, Jean, Robert, Doug and Nancy, Beth, Jean and Betty, Andrew, Pam, Lee, Audrey, and Jonathan. Compassionate Lord, 
your love lives forever. Father, we hold up the names of those who have departed this life and are at rest. We remember Wyatt Davies, the Reverend Canon Russell Elliott, Tony Hope, Dr. Tom Shaw, and Dr. Dick Taylor. May they find peace forever. Compassionate Lord, your love lives forever. Thank you, Father, for making us think of others and not so much of ourselves, and for challenging us to move forward with you, assured of your company and your love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now, if you'll take your bulletin and um, read with me uh, the prayer for a time of pandemic. Loving God, whose peace passes all our understanding, as we face this present pandemic and experience fear and anxiety, may we hear your voice, bringing calm to the storms of our time. Strengthen those who work to limit the spread of infection and those who seek to care for the sick and keep us mindful of those most vulnerable. May we shape our living to protect one another and may our changing habits, practices and sacrifices be for the greater love of our community and for all our people. Amen. And continue with saying the Lord's Prayer with me, please. Let us gather our prayers and the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated for this musical selection, Songs of Thankfulness and Praise, which Michelle is offering to us. And during the offering of music, the financial offering of the parish will be brought forward as we express our thanks to God for all that God has given us and give something of that back to God for the good of the world.
yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything that heaven and on earth is yours, all things come from you, and of your own have we given you. We continue with the words of a doxology, which we'll say together. Glory, Glory to God, whose power working in us, you can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Life is short and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who walk this way with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. There are a number of announcements in the bulletin, some of which I'll just commend to your attention, but tomorrow we will meet again on Zoom for coffee and conversation at 9.30, if you want to stop in. There is an ECW meeting at noon tomorrow here in the church, and uh, so bring your mask, your lunch, and tea or coffee, and we won't be serving refreshments, but you're welcome to consume, and we'll uh, honor all of the health protocols that we're meant to in terms of physical distancing. And uh, we will be we're talking about the Christmas Bazaar that is replacing the annual coffee party and uh, how the Christmas puddings will happen. So we're starting to ask people to collect tins for that. Parish Council meets 7 o'clock this Wednesday evening. And if you have items you'd like to have brought forward to Parish Council, please let the wardens or myself know by noon tomorrow. And that way we can add them to the agenda. Uh, you'll notice at the back of the church or when you came in uh, near the entrance that there are minutes from yesterday's congregational meeting and a parochial committee, a search committee, has been elected, so the details are there, the names, and I'm sure we'll talk about that at Parish Council, and there'll be more information provided next Sunday uh, to all of you, or perhaps before then, but just, uh, you have those minutes, and also there are notes, highlights from the last Parish Council meeting, just so you have a sense of what happened there as well, although some of them are kind of written uh, with an understanding that they're coming out a little bit late, so some things have already happened, I should note. Um, we, I want to let you know about the granny sale which is coming up and there's a place to keep jewelry, uh, to offer jewelry at the back of the church in a, in a bag. So if you want to offer some jewelry for that sale, that would be lovely. Uh, I wanted to let people know that there are a few things coming up. There is a youth event coming up and it's um, an option to be there physically present or to, to go um, online, be present online. And uh, the guest speaker is Elle Jones, who's a noted activist and former poet laureate in, of Halifax. And that should be a really interesting event. So if you know young people in grades seven to 12 who might like to attend, they've extended the deadline. And also there's another opportunity for those beyond grade 12 who might like to um, gather online with others to reflect on uh, how it, what it's like now to be living in the church and how we might do things differently or new ideas or even some things we've done that are not so new. Uh, but it's an opportunity to share and learning with other people who are curious about the church and the future of the church. So it, that is, uh, there's some information there in your uh, insert in your bulletin that will tell you a little bit more about that as well. Um, I am interested in knowing whether there are some folks that might come together to talk about Sunday School and how we might approach that going forward. So if that's of interest, if, if, whether you feel you can take a leadership role, um, just to have some people come together and, and talk that through, hopefully with a few um, parents or maybe some of the older children, that might be helpful as well. So just if you're interested in that, if you could let me know and we can find a time that will work, that would be great. And I know that there's information on the bulletin board at the back of the church about the Primates Fund Christmas cards. So if you would like to uh, order some, Helen um, is here waiting in the back. So she can talk to you about that or you can sign up at the back. All the information you need is in the bulletin uh, for that as well. Um, and, and just before we conclude, I just would ask you to continue to hold in your hearts, um, the people in Southwest Nova Scotia around Sunnyvale and St. Mary's Bay and the ongoing conflict that's happening between 
indigenous fishers and commercial fishers. Um, it is something that has been a great distress for me through the week as I've watched events unfold and just ask you to keep that situation and all the people involved in your prayers as we hope and pray for resolution and safety for all those who are involved and certainly our prayers continue for, for everyone involved in that situation. We're allowed to have a closing hymn. <laughs> One more opportunity to sing. So our closing hymn is Immortal, Invisible, God, Only Wise, number 393 in the Blue Common Phrase Hymn Book. And I encourage you again to wear your masks if you're going to sing, and we sing softly, but with great joy. <laughs> Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.